Hey everyone, Roger here from Ask Car Experts YouTube channel and I had a subscriber question about an issue they're having with their E46 and it pertains to the brake pad wear sensor. So today I'm going to go over exactly how the brake pad wear sensor works and how to diagnose it on an E46. Join Zion and me, like and subscribe. Let's take a look how this brake system works. So the brake pad sensor is a very simple circuit. We have Fuse 34 which supplies power to the instrument cluster via pin 5 at connector X11175 and it works actually off of a grounding circuit each one of these guys right here is the actual sensor and you can see this little nub inside so as it wears through the brake pad sensor nub which is this top part right here it will actually open the wire that's in here this is just a two wire sensor and it just goes to a two pin connector and in this side of the connector it is male pins and on the body side of the car it's female pins so as it wears through this is going to create an open and the circuit is no longer grounded so when this detects an open it's going to ground through the instrument cluster and the lights going to come on it's as simple as that so there's multiple ways to check this when working on any kind of electrical circuit, you want to try to divide and conquer. So we could check right here at pin 24 of the instrument cluster and check for continuity to ground through this entire circuit. We should have good continuity using the ohm setting of the DVOM. If you don't have good continuity, your problem is on this side. And you can also check for power at pin 5 of the instrument cluster. And obviously you want to make sure fuse 34 is good. This is what happens when you forget your head flashlight at work. You get Creative. Okay, so set your vo digital volt ohm meter to ohms, and it's always good to check it. So touch your leads together, you should read a certain kind of ohmage. I'm saying 0.2, so I have 0.2 ohms of resistance in my actual wiring of my DVOM. So to do my test, I just have a couple of pins in the connector side of the brake pad sensor. I'm hooked up here to the other side of the wiring. Basically, I'm just ohming out through the sensor, and I get 0.9 ohms. That's how you check to see if your sensor is good. You should have a ohmage resistance. Now if you see this, OL, OL would mean that there's no continuity in the circuit and you have an open in that sensor, which would trip your light. You guys are wondering, see how this has male side connectors and then this did have female on the other end. This is an airbag repair harness. And it's my kind of go-to tool to test a lot of pins on BMW. So if you want this number, it is part number 9118086. I also like this Tool Aid 20-piece black probe kit. This is a great tool for electrical testing because it gives you all these nice probes. But this is actually a very, very good go-to kit. I'll put this in the link in the description box. So where do you want to go to rule out a big section of your wiring? So if we go to the front left brake pad sensor, GE is yellow, SW is, is Schwartz for black. So we would actually have to check it from pin two. From pin two, we check the wiring in the car and through the rear brake pad sensor. So we could check from pin two to rule out this whole section right here. So as a quick side note, this is the most common cause of a warning light on for your brake system where it's contacted somewhere and rubbed through the sheathing and actually has damages the wire. So if you have too much resistance or too much corrosion or you have a break in any of the wires for this sensor, it's also going to trip the brake pad warning. So you always want to inspect the whole length of the harness. And this runs all along the frame here, so it could be at any point, but usually where it rubs is over where it would hit the wheel right over here. And just because it's not secured properly is where it usually rubs. So one of the best places to start figuring this out is to come to the front sensor. So I have the wheel off and this little box is what houses the sensor. So this is my sensor right here. Follow it back to get to the right wire. It's the black connector. Slide it out. Make sure to inspect the length of the wire. It's very easy to unplug. There's a little press tab on the sides and they just pop off like so. All right, so we can see here's the two female connectors right here in the harness. And then we could also check the male side of the connector, but we're gonna go from the female side 
We're gonna check through the whole circuit to ground. We can use these pins right here, which is the female side, and we can check continuity to ground and continuity to our instrument cluster from this connector. So this front left sensor really is a great go-to spot. So you can see right here, I have a yellow and a, and a black wire. So you can figure out which pin is which just by looking at your wire color. So we need to check the yellow wire and make sure that you have a good ground. I connected at the ground in the engine compartment, but you can go right to the negative cable and use a retractable test lead so that you can reach the location. It's very important to have a very good ground. So I'm gonna use that adapter I had from that test kit and just hold it to my pin and do a reading. And I'm actually getting, and I'll show you in a second, I'm actually getting 1.8 to two ohms. So now I know that my wiring is good from that connector all the way back to the rear sensor. Now if I check my other pin, I should see very high resistance actually which is the black wire, that's going up to the instrument cluster. So 4.73 is most likely gonna be normal. So we just checked it from pin two through this connector here, which is the rear sensor all the way to the ground, which is behind the rear seat. We know that this circuit is good. So if you see an open from pin two on, now you have to go and measure between pin two and pin two to check the body harness wire. Obviously your sensor, you should ohm out your sensor, and then check from pin one to just any chassis ground to see if your issue is back behind the seat. All right, so let's say you now checked it from pin two back, and all of that was good. We also need to check this side of the circuit here. So we need to take out the instrument cluster and check from pin 24. We can check from 24 to one, or we can actually go from 24, and with all of this circuit, installed correctly, we should also get continuity ground at pin 24. If you don't, then your issue is right here if you've already checked from pin two to chassis ground. This would be where your issue is. Also, we have to make sure that we have power at pin 34. Obviously, you're gonna wanna check your fuse first to make sure that your fuse is there. Although I think we'll have to pull the fuse out and see if the warning comes on. If the fuse is removed, does the warning go off or stay on? Let's find out. All right, so let's see if I have a warning on for my brake pad sensor. This is the symbol right here. Of course, it did self-check and then went out, so that means the circuit is actually good in my car. That's the symbol right there for your brake pad sensor. So in order to reset the brake pad sensor, you just have to turn the key on to the second position and just leave it on and it will then do a self-check, and if it sees that everything's okay, it's going to shut the light off. All right, I just unplugged my sensor. Let's see what happens. As you can see now, so now my warning light is on for my brake pad sensor. When it did a self-check before, now my warning is on constantly. That's the brake pad sensor warning right there. The circle with three dots on each side. All right, I just plugged my sensor back in. If I cycle my key on, the warning is still active. So now you just have to leave it on and wait. And then the warning shuts itself off, just like that. And I have the key in the second position versus the first. First position is just accessory, and that's the light you'd have. Second position is with all the cluster lights on. The fuse panel can be accessed from the glove box. I have my glove box removed. If you want to see how that's done, I have a video for that. I'll put a link up. But according to this paper diagram, according to this, there's nothing in fuse 34. However, on the car, there actually was a fuse on pin 34 which is right here at the end. Remove the five amp fuse. Let's see what kind of symptom we get. So could your brake warning issue be caused from an issue with the fuse 34? Let's find out what happens. So if I key my ignition on, my cluster is actually not working. So that fuse also feeds the instrument cluster. So you'd have a different symptom. You'd have no lights coming on in your instrument cluster if fuse 34 was open. So it's a good way to check it. If all your lights are coming on, you can assume that that fuse is good. All right, I've reinstalled the fuse. You can see all of my lights come on and my warning is currently off. All right, so where do you go next? Well, we can check some things at the instrument cluster itself. So to remove the instrument cluster, you're gonna need a T20 
and you just have to take the two screws off which I pre-loosened on the top of the instrument cluster right here. With those two screws removed, just have to hook the base with a finger or a screwdriver and then free it up and the instrument cluster will pop down and just fold out of the way. So then you can actually just feed it out to the side and it gives you access to the connectors on the back right here. And we need this connector right here to check. All right, to unlock it from the instrument cluster, you just press down on the tab and it slides out. When you go in, you leave it like this, you push it into place and it'll relock for you. Now, if you have a pin tool to front probe this, you could front probe it, but you wanna make sure you have the right size connector. I do have that, but you might not have that at home. So on the side of the connector right here is a little tab. If you lift up on that tab, you can actually slide out the housing. Just put that down somewhere where you're not gonna lose it. And now you have access that you can use that little pick tool to probe all of these connectors in the right wire that we need. All right, so the connector is numbered. One's on the bottom to, I think it was 18, and then it goes to 25 on the end. We have to check 24. All right, so the connector actually goes to 26 pins. So the third one back should be yellow. And we can see right there, the third one back is yellow. And that's the one we need to check to check to continuity to ground from the instrument cluster all the way back through the sensors to the ground in the vehicle. So holding it up against that pin, I get 35 ohms about. So that's what you're gonna see for a good resistance reading from the instrument cluster all the way back to the vehicle ground if your circuit is good. If your circuit is not good, then you have to break down the circuit and check continuity to ground from the front sensor, and then you can check at the rear sensor and you can figure out where your brake is. All right, so I then switched to volts, direct current. Whenever you're checking for ohms, you wanna make sure that there's no power in the car. But obviously we wanna check power now to see if our circuit is good from our fuse to the instrument cluster. And that's at pin five of the instrument cluster here. So I'm gonna key it on. So I'm gonna to go to pin five with the key on. I'm gonna go one, two, three, four, pin five. And I'm getting 11.8 volts. So now I know my power supply to my instrument cluster is good from that fuse. All right, quick recap. Fuse 34, you wanna make sure that your fuse is good, but that would cause problems with your instrument cluster. So we could check at pin five of the instrument cluster. I showed you how to do that. You should see 12 volts around at pin five. And then that's your bulb check right there. And then pin 24 all the way back to ground. If you do a continuity test with the vehicle powered down, remember you will have to do continuity with the vehicle off or the battery disconnected. So from 24 to ground, if that is good and your power supply is good, then what's the failure? Your instrument cluster internally is causing the problem. So that's just how you break down the whole system. If you do not have continuity to ground from pin 24, you go to the next one. So we could actually check from pin two to ground and we can check from pin one at the brake sensor to the cluster. You'd ohm that out and you'd have good continuity. That means that wire is good, otherwise that's your bad wire. Otherwise your sensor is bad. From pin two, if you're open, then it could be the wiring here or a sensor, so you'd ohm out between two and two, and that's at the rear sensor. If this wire ohms out good and your sensor is good, but at pin one to ground is bad, then your body ground that's behind the seat is bad and that's behind the rear seat and that's really it that's all there is to it. it's very simple so you can actually diagnose this very easily it was a little bit harder to record it all always is a challenge especially when I'm by myself maybe a GoPro that I can put on my head and have a Zion cam or something with will make things easier I'm still debating whether to purchase one uh, but you can see it's a very simple circuit and some simple tools the DVLM and electrical test kit, you can actually diagnose your brake pad sensor. So Zion says hi, thanks for watching. Please subscribe to Ask Car Experts YouTube channel, and I hope you found this helpful. Until next time.